Well, I see an aluminum construction here that, except for the shape, looks sort of similar to what you've done with the new uh, cabin on the Ultra Cub, Jim. What are we looking at here? I mean, I see it's a float, but what's, what's the idea behind this? We had customer request to put our B-Lights on floats, and it really became clear that they wanted a good, sturdy, light aluminum float. Uh, in fact, they wanted an amphibious float. So what we did was uh, we told the computer to make for us uh, all of these wonderful skins that are all pre-drilled uh, in, in an in a ultralight float. Uh, and that's exactly what you got here. So you get all these skins. We're building them. It's again a kit. It's a kit. We're talking a kit. kit or you can buy them fully assembled. Okay. Either way. Either way then. But uh, it is a kit uh, and it is just a classic aluminum float. Bulkheads. Uh, the engineering, how things fit together, I think, is, is just pretty artful. I see I see a lot of what looks like labor in this. What is what is the build time on one of these? You got that right. It'd be wrong to say there isn't a lot. Of yeah, I see a lot of rivets. And of course, you have to have them. You don't want leaks yeah. in a float. That doesn't work at all. Uh, I think the honest number is that you should spend, plan on spending around 120 hours per float. Per float, okay. To build them. I mean, just for example, putting on one of the major skins, is a three to four hour job just after you've got it drilled to after, get it all after it's ready for the skinning you got to make the you know you got to make the sealant put that down come back in put the rivets in you're going to have some problems fitting you're going to do some final drilling where you something didn't work out right and then you've got 300 rivets to pull and you got to is do that right it all. In, the, in the whole airplane no, on, on, like on one skin on one skin okay so yeah i'm seeing a lot i'm seeing a lot of rivets down no. here but you can see that they've got a sealed head on them and you can also seal that Everywhere a rivet went down at the water line, it was all right. I'm looking down in here, all this there's sealant. Ah, down in here, here, too. Yeah, oh, yeah, I see on the tip of every little rivet there. Yep, you can see those. So, yep, so that's how you do it, so you don't end up with any leaks. Now, what size aircraft is this particular? Sure. You know, th this doesn't look like a real large float here. No, this one is perfectly matched for a B light or for any other ultralight, true ultralight aircraft. For a 254 ultralight. A max, a little, even a little more, just okay. a little more. 620 pounds is your max uh, weight of the air crane. Okay. And here's the idea: there are guys flying experimentals. Sure, I know you got quite a few that are. And then uh, you know they're like, still light. Yeah, but they're a little heavier. So than So 350 pound airplane with a single pilot and some fuel. He'll he'll want to do this kind of thing. Uh, air bikes. Uh, I had a guy already buy a set for an air bike. Uh, and uh, anyway, 600 and so those pounds. are light. Yeah. Now, are you going to plan a bigger one? Yes, that's what we're trying to figure out. I've got two options there. Love to hear your bias on this one. Uh, the first is uh, there's a sweet spot around a thousand pounds uh, gross weight. That's that would be for like a Kit Fox two, you know, the original right. nine hundred pounds. The earlier ones, right? Uh -huh. And then the next sweet spot, without a doubt, is fourteen hundred and thirty pounds for everyone for whatever reason who wants to hit LSA. Sure, that middle number hits with what we used to call. Uh, an ultralight or what in Europe is always Still, called a microlight yeah. or an ultralight and they're exactly that kind of thousand pound number. There's a lot of those aircraft out there. And this is an item that can be retrofitted. I mean, you're, you're not designing this for a new airplane. This is for someone to say, well, I want to put my airplane on yep. floats, right? That's right. So, uh, we've got another little part down here that I want to bring up now because these, this looks like a straight float, but you've got an amphibious system. Yeah. Tell me something about what we're looking at here, well. Jim. Yeah, this is the uh, main gear. It mounts in the center well. It mounts directly to the bulkhead. This float happens to be set up to accept in this, it. In this orientation that we're looking at right here? Yes, this is it. So here it is extended. Here it is retracted. Okay. Extended. This is the flapper arm that locks it into place. Okay. The release is real easy. Your, uh, your uh, cable mounts right there. Pulls it back and up at the same time. Ah, I see. Okay. And then gravity release. It comes right back down and locks into place. Over center type locking. Yep. Right so, and I see you've got uh, on this side over here. Let's turn it around for the camera. You got uh, brake. Yeah, that's a stainless steel brake. Uh, in the ultralights, uh, we've had perfect performance with uh, heavy duty mountain bike brakes. Ah, huh? is that right? That's exactly what this is. <laughs> cool. So we've got. Well, we know they like to make yeah. things light too. Those guys. They want do. They want. And they and they also have the same problems: mud, water. Stuff gets in there. Yeah. And so it's a perfect match for an ultralight float. Perfect. It's the same thing that we're using on an air. Excellent. And then, uh, you know, for the bigger ones, uh, we'd use a different brake. All right, we're talking here with Jim Weeby of V-Light Aircraft, who's done some pretty cool things that we've watched over the years and more now. 
Uh, we didn't give everybody our, all the information, so we'll put it on the screen, but give us your website address sure. here for uh, more info. Be Light Aircraft, B-E-L-I-T-E, -E, aircraft.com. And you've got a blog spot that I follow because it's some neat writing. An uh, old computer guy like you knows about using it well. Uh, that we can find the blog Please. information through the Straight website Straight off as well. the website. It's right there on the home page. I, uh, I post anywhere from four to ten or more times a month. And i got readers coming from all over the world. I see that, right? I noticed yeah. that. I'll uh, help link you up to that as well on my website, which is bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us today at Sunday Fun.